We are going to look at how to set up Accordance Bible software for Hebrew. So I'm going to double click on the Accordance icon here and it will come up. In this case it's coming up with some things I had up before. I'm going to get rid of these. We will just start with a blank slate here. Up here second from the left, this is our library icon. If I click on that, it will bring up a section where I can find my resources. It's got a recently opened one, so I have various things that I've recently looked at, ESV, the Greek New Testament, the Hebrew Bible, and then it has a number of other categories. I'm going to get rid of this. I don't typically have it open. The first thing we need to do is to set up our preferences. So we'll come under Edit, and then come all the way down to Preferences. So the very first thing you want to do is under General, under Startup, you want to set this to Last Session. When you bring up Accordance, it will bring up all the windows that you had open before. And that's very helpful because then you don't have to reopen everything it will come back to where you left off. Under Amplify, you have this area called Triple Click Defaults. Now for Hebrew, when you triple click on a word, it will bring up a Hebrew dictionary. For Greek, it'll bring up a Greek dictionary of some kind. For Hebrew, you want to set this to the Concise Dictionary of Classical Hebrew. So for Hebrew, Concise Dictionary of Classical Hebrew. This will be the most useful of the resources that are available to you for the kind of work that we're going to be doing. For Greek, you can put Thayer, although it's, you won't need that until you're working with Greek. The other ones aren't so important. For the key numbers, I put Strong's, but so under Greek key number, Greek strong dictionary, Hebrew key number, Hebrew strong dictionary. This isn't super important. Typically the instant details, which we will see shortly, will give you the strong's number anyway. Okay, next we come down to appearance. Now this is things like general theme. You can this just gives you the colors. You can pick whatever you like. There's one thing here, though, that is important. Down here at the bottom, you've got this button called Organize All Tools by Category. You want to click this. Now, I've already done it, so I don't need to do it again. You want to click that button and say yes, because that will help you immensely when it comes to choosing resources later. I'll show you that in a minute. In fact, I'll show it to you now. When we come over to the New button, what that option does for you is it sorts out everything into higher level categories. So notice I have under Modern Bibles, I've got a whole list of Bibles here. Under Greek texts, I've got a bunch of Greek texts. Uh, Hebrew, I've only got a few, but other texts, not so many. But under Dictionaries, I've got a lot. If I don't click that button back under Preferences, so if I don't click the Organize All Tools by Category, what you will get is a massive list, alphabetical list of all your resources, and they're not categorized. So you have to sort through that whole list to find what you're looking for. But it's much better to have them sorted out into categories, and you can find what you're looking for a lot faster. So under this one, Organize all tools by category, click yes, and that will make it a lot easier for you to find resources. Okay, so now under text display, for search highlighting, I have this set to red. You can set it to whatever color you want. Sapphire or blue is okay as well. But that's just then when you're doing a, a search, it will highlight the words that have been found by the search with red. And then under tool display, 
I typically have search highlighting. The entry in the lexicon will show up in red. This is my default here. I can pick other colors if I want. For hypertext, I typically pick blue because that's the normal default for a hypertext link is blue. Under Greek and Hebrew, if these are not already set, click automatic final letter, automatic diacritical marks. You will not want to use the Israeli keyboard. The keyboard that's already there is much more intuitive. Moving on, not much else we need to worry about here. Under Unicode display, the default for all of these should be accordance and that will work fine. For Greek and Hebrew, those are the main ones that you're going to be worried about. The accordance font will work fine. For instant details, for right now you can check everything. I don't typically check English transliteration. You can check that for the time being. Once you've learned the letters, you will not need to worry about English transliteration. But go ahead and leave a check to, for right now. And that should be it for the moment. And in order to save your changes, be sure to click OK. Now, to bring up a new resource, you click on the New button over here on the far left. Notice it says New Tab. Click on that, and you'll have all these categories. Uh, that is, if you click that button back there under Appearance, that's said to organize them. And so I'm going to come down to Hebrew Text. I have two here. You're, go you're only going to have one. You're going to have Hebrew Bible, Biblia Hebraica tagged. I have a second one because I actually bought a second one. But this is the one you're going to see, Hebrew Bible. Click on that. And it will bring up the Hebrew Bible. It will also bring up another window here, which I typically get rid of instantly because I don't I'm not interested in a commentary at the moment. Notice that the entire workspace now is set and it's over here Genesis 1 1. So for instance, if I type in Psalm PS5, it will bring me bring me to Psalm 5.1. So I can type whatever I want to in here under verses. Notice that I can increase the font over here in the, on the left side here. I might want the font a little bit bigger, particularly as, as I'm learning to read Hebrew. I want to be able to see these marks better. So I can, I can increase the font size. Now, as I hover over a word, notice that it's highlighted, I'm not clicking anything. Down at the bottom here, I see instant details. This is the instant details window. Now I bring that up with a button here. So there's a button up here, it says instant details. I can get rid of that or I can bring it back. I typically leave it up so when I hover over a word, it brings up the instant details down at the bottom. Now, if I want to bring my cursor down there, I have to hit the Shift key. So I hit the Shift key, come down, and I can then use my cursor down here. Another option is to left-click, or just click. When I say click, I mean left-click. If I want to say right-click, I will say right-click. So I'll click on this, and half a second later, my instant details come up right under the word. The instant details provide a lot of information, and you'll find that they're very helpful. So you can either get them by clicking about half a second later, the instant details will come up here, or hover over the word, and the instant details show up at the bottom. Okay, now to... Find something in the Bible. You can either type it here. So I can type in, let's say, I don't know, 1 Kings 
one ki four that'd be chapter four accordance likes you to put in a colon in if you want to put a verse number in so 423 i can go to first kings 423 now a very handy feature is way over here on the right hand side you've got something called add parallel and i'm going to click that and it might not have recents. If you don't have anything there, you'll have to go and search under texts. I typically pick ESV with Strong's. That's going to give me a parallel. So now I have the Hebrew on the left, the English uh, ESV on the right. And as I hover over a word, it will tell me what the corresponding English word is in the ESV. Now sometimes you will not see a corresponding word and that means that the English version doesn't have a, an equivalent for it and that's fine. Sometimes you don't have an exact equivalent in your English translation for a Hebrew word. And so the, the, the parallel can be helpful. The parallel Bible can be helpful. Another thing to note is Remember when we set the triple click default, so back under preferences, we set the triple click default, that was under amplify. We set that to, I thought we set it, we set it to concise dictionary of biblical Hebrew. Maybe I forgot to click okay. Okay, let me come back, make sure that it's there. Okay, Amplify, Concise Dictionary of Classical Hebrew. All right, so now if I find a word, if I triple click on it, now I don't know why it's not double click, but you triple click, one, two, three, it now brings up a lexicon, and it is the Concise Dictionary of Classical Hebrew, which is what I had set in my preferences. Now I can come over here, hover over this, and then click and make this smaller which is what I recommend doing. So now you have your Hebrew, your parallel English, and a dictionary over here. The word that I clicked on was Melech, king. Now what the dictionary gave us was the verb from the same root, Malach. And it does that sometimes. The actual entry for Melech is down a little farther. Here we go. Melech, this is our entry for king, ruler. Sometimes when you triple click, it will take you to the root, and then you can find the word you're looking for close by. Not a big deal, and it will make more sense later. To get rid of the parallel text, I can just click the X at the top right. That will get rid of it. To bring up a new window, I can either click the new button again, or now that I have a tab, I can come to this plus just to the right of my tab, and I can open up something else. Let me say I want to, let's say I want to open up a modern Bible. I'm going to open up ESV. So the ESV with Strong's. Again, for some reason, it always wants to give me a commentary. I don't want a commentary, so I'll get rid of that. I wish I could get rid of that option. And so now I have the ESV with Strong's. And I can look at that. Notice that there's a tab for each of these now. I've got a tab for the Hebrew Bible, a tab for the ESV. And so I'll have a tab for anything that I bring up. Again, if I want to add the parallel back, I come over to Add Parallel. And since now I've already chosen the ESV with Strong's, that'll be under my recent modules and I can pick that. It will give me then the parallel to the right of my text. And my dictionary is still up over here. And again, if I want to triple click on a word, here's, a, here's the word Ben, Sun. I'll triple click one, two, three. And now I have the dictionary entry over here for Sun, Bane. So there's some information on Preliminary setup, some basics of how to open up windows, get a parallel window, and how to find a word in the Hebrew dictionary.